Richard Lee Hardy was born in Little Kutztown, PA on April 7, 1924. He grew up with his mother and dad, five brothers and two sisters as the second youngest boy. On the farm in which he lived, he would work a lot outside and play with his siblings. He described his youth as a great childhood. He attended Myerstown High School and later worked at Boyer Printing. Prior to enlisting in the United States Naval Corps, he had never been on the water in his life. Hardy enlisted on February 23, 1943. He enlisted so he could choose the Navy. He was sent to a new camp in Bainbridge, Maryland for his basic training. He did not have his mind set on what he wanted to do. Consequently, he chose torpedo school. Although he was not mechanically inclined, he still enjoyed this school. Mr. Hardy was then sent to Newport, Rhode Island, where he was given the rank of Torpedo Man 2nd Class. He graduated from Torpedo School 30th out of 200. Just before Hardy was sent to Orange, Texas, where he would reside in the barracks until the ship was fully built. He married his girlfriend at the time, Rachel. This was in 1943. While in Orange, Texas in 1943, Mr. Hardy would watch the ship being built every day for a long time. Finally, the USS Willis DE-395 was finished, and his, he and his crew members embarked on the ship. The areas that they served in were in the North Atlantic and in the Philippines. Their objective, to find and destroy German submarines in the North Atlantic and Philippines, and to protect an assigned aircraft carrier. Through the duration of his entire service period, he and his shipmates sank 13 submarines, his main job was to regulate the torpedo tubes on the ship. He had a few men under him since he was a torpedo man second class. While cleaning the torpedo tubes one day, he slipped and fell off and his wedding ring got caught. As a result, his ring finger was torn off. He performed many other duties on the ship along with other men. Some of these duties included shoveling frozen water from the deck so the ship would not be weighed down any more than it already was and sink. It was our job to to find the submarines and sink them. So we patrolled the whole North Atlantic and we sank, I'm pretty certain, we, th there were four air, four D destroyer escorts is what we were on and uh, the torpedo tubes were above deck. They weren't down below water like on a submarine. And then, th then one aircraft carrier, we protected that aircraft carrier. And then we hunted submarines, I think we sank Thir uh, 13, I believe, submarines mm -hmm. in, in our time, and then <clears throat> we went to Newfoundland and we got a presidential citation for sinking submarines the quantity of sub yeah. The submarines they sank were primarily German, but they once destroyed a Japanese sub. In one instance, they destroyed a German submarine and took the survivors as prisoners of war. The Japanese submarine they sank after a lengthy battle, on the other hand, was completely destroyed leaving no survivors. As they were fishing out the wreckage from the sea, they discovered the disembodied stomach of a deceased Japanese man. Mr. Hardy was discharged on December 4th, 1945. After he was discharged, he was sent to Seattle, Washington, and was treated like a real war hero. When he returned home, he continued to work at Boyer Printing and stayed there for 50 years of his life. He was welcomed home by his family and treated exactly how someone would want to be treated after serving in a war. I came back, they sent me um, to, to, it doesn't strike me nowhere. But anyhow, when I came home, they they, they were uh, they sent me to uh, Seattle, Washington, excuse me, yeah. So why there? But anyhow, that was kind of isolated and, and far removed from Bainbridge, which would have been where we where we went into the service, mm -hmm. but I went to Seattle, Washington, and, they, and it was great. They, they treated you really fantastic. Yeah, back then we were a war hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He would have liked to have re-enlisted in the Navy, but he didn't because of his wife. Although later he found out that she would have stayed with him if he had done so. He ended up just settling down and starting a family with his wife Rachel. Mr. Hardy stayed in contact with some of his shipmates from the Willis. They would have annual reunions where they would pick a place in the country and go there just to sightsee and whatnot. He also only received his medals a few years ago. He obtained the following medals. The American Campaign Medal, the European African Middle Eastern Medal, 
the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, and World War II Victory Medal. These were all earned in the time period from 1943 to 1945. But he received them later in life at a ceremony held at the Pavilion of Freedom's Lutheran Church in Myerstown, Pennsylvania. The ceremony was organized by Ronald Haig after he had written a letter to the government asking for Mr. Hardy's medals. Mr. Hardy is currently 88 years old and lives in Arborgate in Myerstown, PA. He has three daughters and is still with his wife, Rachel. He never regretted enlisting in the military, and he was happy to do this interview. He did such a great service to his country by serving in the United States Naval Corps, and for that, he will forever be remembered. Thank you, Mr. Hardy, for all you have done for your country and for agreeing to help us with this project.